drowning in the deep. Drowning in the deep. When I was a little boy, oh, about the age of five years of age, our neighbor had an in-ground pool. At five years of age, at that time, he didn't know how to swim. But I was over at my neighbor's house, and it was a summer day. They were out there, and some people were in the pool, but I was just out there just hanging out with my friend. And I started to walk around the outer edge of the pool. A little five-year-old boy, probably not a smart thing to do. But I was walking around the outer edge of the pool, and the in-ground pool with, a, I guess, aluminum or a siding there that went around it. And um, I hit a spot where some water had gotten up onto that edge. And don't remember much of it, but I remember falling into the pool. And don't remember much after that, but I just remember somebody grabbed me out, and, 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 and I'm choking, just trying to, just trying to uh, uh, catch my breath to be able to breathe and, and choke him. So I wasn't under very long, but I fell down deep and not knowing how to swim, not knowing how to doggy paddle or tread water or anything like that. Uh, that was very frightening as a five-year-old little boy. And, uh, so much to the point where um, I was afraid to get baptized, even though I, was the right, I knew it was the right thing to do, and I ended up getting baptized not until... Oh, what was it, last week? No. no. Uh, I already ended up getting, not getting baptized until I was like 18 years of age, you know, uh, until I turned 18. Um, I, I was ready before 18, but just uh, had put it off. But for the, the longest time, at the age of 10 or 11, I wouldn't have trusted a, a pastor to baptize me at that point because I was so fearful. And uh, even trying to do swimming lessons, we had a, a community, community uh, pool and they taught you free swimming lessons. I didn't want to go. Uh, my, my sister Gina went. She learned how to swim very good there. I went maybe once or twice, but I didn't want to go. I just uh, I was kind of uh, afraid of the water and, and drowning. And so that drowning is the idea of this psalm. Psalm 69 is a psalm of lament. It's written by King David. And he's lamenting or crying and grieving over the persecution that he is facing. And he gives us an illustration in this psalm of that idea of drowning. The idea of going underwater, going down deep and, and feeling like you can't breathe and you're, you're going to die. And so that's how David describes this psalm. Psalm 69 is interesting. It is one of the most quoted psalms in the New Testament. When you look at the New Testament, there's a lot of times the Old Testament is quoted, and Psalm 69 is, is a psalm that is often quoted in the New, New Testament. So with that this morning, I want to go through, we're going to go through verse by verse. I'll see how many, I have several points, I don't know how many we'll get to today. But I want to talk to you this morning on this thought, drowning in the deep, drowning in the deep. Look at Psalm 69, verse 1. Save me. O oh God, for the waters come in unto my soul. You can hear the anguish. You can hear the desperation in King David's voice. Save me, O oh God, save me. The deep waters are come into my soul. I can picture David, I can picture it like a person that's uh, in a car that has gone over into a lake and the water is starting to fill up in that car and it's coming up and up and up and up and it's getting up to his neck and David's crying out, save me, O Lord. He's feeling overwhelmed. The waters have come in unto his soul and he's crying out. He's crying out for a life preserver. He's crying out for his lifeguard, Jesus, uh, the Lord, to come and save him. Verse 2, he goes on to say, I sink in deep mire. I sink in deep mire. In other words, that would be to our uh, modern day think of somebody in quicksand. Somebody sinking, sinking down. I remember uh, growing up and watching those shows. I haven't seen a, seen a show like this in, in, in ages, but I remember uh, seeing it more than once. And I don't even remember what shows it were, what, what shows it 
we're seeing it on, but I remember seeing someone in quicksand going down and down and down, and then at the uh, getting to the point in some cases where he's so far down there's nothing you can do to get him out, and but getting to him before he gets so deep into that quicksand. But think of David here. He's saying, listen, I feel like I'm just overwhelmed with floods of water in my soul. And then he describes it as being quickened in sand or being uh, sinking down in the deep mire of clay and, and mud where there is no standing. He said, listen, I'm, st I'm standing, but yet I'm not because my, my feet are keeping going down. I don't have a firm surface to stand on. I'm sinking. There's no standing. Then he goes on to say in verse 2, I come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. It's tragic to see sometimes uh, uh, just from a, an abundance of rain or an overflow of a river how a river can overflow its banks and all that water can come rushing out and people get caught in that flood and get caught in uh, uh, being taken away downstream in a flood. Something that was unexpected. And here's David saying the same thing. He says, listen, I've been over flooded. I feel like I've just been rushed away or, or taken away with this abundance of water. He's crying out. For God. And then verse 3, he says this I am weary of my crying. David said, Listen, I'm just tired of crying. I've cried so much that I can't cry anymore. He said, I'm just tired. I'm sick and tired of crying and, 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 and lamenting and grieving. He says, I've cried so much that my throat is dried. I feel like I'm just gasping for air. He says, mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. My eyes are bloodshot. I, it's, it's, things have become blurry now. I've cried so much. And it's not because I've, I'm intoxicated with, with alcohol, but I'm intoxicated with sorrow. My eyes are full of, of, of weary and my, my eyes are failing and I cannot see clearly because of the sorrow and the drowning. So this morning, I want to give you some thoughts. First of all, point number one, David was so broken, he felt like he was drowning in his sorrow. David was so broken, he felt like he was drowning in his sorrow. Drowning. What is drowning? It is the inability to stay above the hurt. Instead, you are submerged into it. It's the inability to stay above the hurt. Instead, you are submerged into it. And here David is talking about his feelings of drowning in sorrow. He's overwhelmed. He's crying. He's looking for something to soothe his soul. This drowning feeling that David is going through, he's drowning in his sorrow. That drowning is the inability to stay above the hurt. It's the inability to, 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 to stay above the, 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 the grief and the pain. Instead, you sink down into it. 1 Timothy 6, 9 says this, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men and destruction and perdition. People are drowning today. Men, women, all across this country are drowning tonight, today. They're in despair. They're drowning in sorrow. They're drowning with feelings of anxiety and panic and desperation. And here's King David saying, Save me, Lord, I'm drowning. Please save me. That's the cry of many people today. Save me, Lord. Please keep me safe. Please protect me. Please provide for me. Lord, I've lost my job. Lord, I don't know where I'm going to get my next meal from. Lord, I don't know where I'm gonna, uh, how I'm going to provide for my family. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to uh, uh, 
Pray for my, my, my loved one who's become ill. Lord, please hear me. It's a panic, desperate, desperation, and a helplessness that comes to an individual that makes them feel like they're drowning. Here's David, because of the persecution that he was facing from King Saul, and then not only King Saul, then later on, then the Philistines, and then the other enemies of God, even to the point where one day he had to face the persecution of his very own flesh and blood, his son. David knows what it's like to be drowned in the deep of sorrow. He was so heartbroken. He felt like he was drowning in his sorrow. He was heartbroken to lose his son Absalom. He was heartbroken to lose that little baby from Bathsheba's womb. He was heartbroken to have his son turn against him. He was heartbroken because of his own sin. All you have to do is read Psalm 51. It talks about the heartbreak of his own actions. He felt like he was drowning in sorrow. David was so heartbroken, he felt like he was drowning in his sorrow. And the first three verses of this psalm make it very clear his desperation. He said, I'm tired and weary of crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. He's drowning in sorrow. Number two, he gives us a little bit of a reason why the sorrow had come to him. In verse four, if you look at it, he says, they that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Secondly, I want to say this. David was mistreated and falsely accused. He said, listen, people hate you without a cause. They don't have a reason to hate me. I haven't done anything to them. I haven't uh, harmed them. I haven't uh, done evil to them. I haven't spoken uh, um, evil of them. But yet people hate me without a cause, he said. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm being falsely accused. He says, I restore that which I took not away. Listen, I didn't take anything. I didn't steal anything from anybody. I didn't uh, um, uh, take from someone else's life that which they're accusing me of. But yet, I try to make things right even though I was at fault. I try to restore it, he says. He's just giving us the clear, clear uh, description of an innocent man who is being persecuted. And that's what this psalm is about, the, des the despair of being persecuted, at least in the first part of it. It is about the despair of being persecuted. David was so heartbroken, he felt like he was drowning in his sor sorrow, according to the first three verses. In verse 4, he tells us he was mistreated and falsely accused, and he, he was wrongfully being uh, persecuted. Number 3, David was hurt because those he should have been close with started acting like they didn't know him. Look at verse 8. Verse number 8 says this, I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children. David got to the point where he said, listen, my own family doesn't support me. My own family won't stick up for me. My own family won't stand behind me and encourage me and, 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 and uh, support me during this time of sorrow. He's going through this persecution. And he's saying, they treat me like I'm a stranger. I could knock on their door today and they would say, do I know you? David said, that's the way they're acting. They're acting like I'm a stranger to them. They're acting like I'm an alien. 
unto them. David was hurt because those he had been he should have been close with started acting like they didn't know him. Some of the most hurtful heartbreak comes from those who are close with. Some of the most pain that we suffer in this life are from our own family. It could be a mom, it could be a dad, it could be a other family member. It could be our so-called best friend. It could be someone that we have known many years. Listen, it's not the stranger, it's not the it's not the the person that we've never met that are really the heartbreaks that uh, cause us to suffer and to not be able to overcome. He's saying here, David, he's saying, the most hurtful things that have happened to me is the fact that I've been forsaken by my own family. Those that should have been closest to me, those that should have been my most helpful and supportive, uh, supporter, uh, encouraging, supportive, uh, supportive uh, uh, partners have bailed out on me. That hurts when the people you think you can count on end up proving that to be untrue. That's, that hurts. David's like, listen, I, these are people I thought I could count on. These are people that I thought would, would stick up for me. But yet, they haven't. Can you understand how David's feeling this morning? He's drowning in the deep. He's drowning in the deep of sorrow. He's drowning because he's been mistreated and falsely accused. He's drowning because those that should have been his closest supporters are now against him and acting like they don't know him. But it goes on. David was hurt, number four, because he was sincerely trying to live for God and do right, but suffered reproach for it. Now look at the verses with me here. Verses 7 through 12. Listen carefully to David's cry here, David's description. Because for thy sake, whose sake? God's sake. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach and shame hath covered my face. Verse 8, we just read about him becoming a stranger. Look at verse 9. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. When I wept, and chasten my soul with fasting, thou wast to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment. I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me. And I was the song of the drunkards. David was sincerely trying to live for God and do right. He said, Lord, it's for your sake that I've, been, that I've borne reproach. Shame has covered my face because I've stuck up for you and I've quoted your word and I've preached your word and I've stood up for you and stood by your side, Lord, and I've become a song to the drunkards. They mock me. They laugh at me. They, they make fun of me because I believe in the Lord God Almighty. They make fun of me because I believe in in the word of the uh, living God, they make fun of me because I kneel my uh, I kneel my heart in prayer and I bow my head before you, O Lord, and they laugh at me when I pray. David was experiencing reproach. Why? Because he was living wickedly. No. Why? Because he was unfaithful to the Lord. No. He was doing right. He was an honest. At this point in his life, honest, in good character, in a right relationship with the Lord, and yet he's being attacked and persecuted. It's hard to deal with sorrow. It's hard to deal with sorrow when it's come as a result of being mistreated and falsely accused. It's hard to deal with sorrow when you have no support with the people that you think you should have support with. It's hard to deal, deal, deal with sorrow when you're receiving retribution from it because you did what was right. You stood for the truth, and now you're being thrown in jail for it. You stood for God, and now you're being 
cursed. You stood for the Bible, now you're being mocked. You prayed in front of individuals, and now you're being laughed at. Here's David. He says, listen, I'm doing right. I'm living for God, and yet persecution has come. He says in Psalm 57, verse 3, this. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up, Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. He's waiting for God. He's patiently waiting for God to deliver him. Remember, he starts up the chapter, save me, O oh God, save me, save me. Now he's waiting for God. Because he knows he hasn't done anything to deserve this. He's waiting for his God to come and deliver him. David's sorrow will eventually turn into despair. But if before it does, verse 13, the Bible says, But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. So number one, I said David was so heartbroken he felt like he was drowning in his sorrow. Secondly, I said David was mistreated and falsely accused. Third, David was hurt because he should have been close with he, those he should have been close with started acting like they, like they didn't know him. Four, David was hurt because he was sincerely trying to live for God and do right but suffered reproach for it. Five, Here's an important part of the message. David did not allow his hurt to stop him from doing what he knew was right. He's drowning in sorrow. He's being persecuted. He's being falsely accused. He's being mistreated. He's being forsaken by his family. But David said, listen, I know this sorrow has come upon me because I've done right. And at this point, I'm going to continue doing right. I'm not going to turn my back. I'm not going to go against the Lord my God. I'm not going to try to wiggle out of this persecution by doing what they want me to do or doing what will be more acceptable to them. I'm going to continue doing what I know is right, regardless of how much more persecution I face. Verse 13, he prays. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me, and in the truth of thy salvation. David's trust was in the Lord. David said, I'm going to continue, continue doing right and let God deal with my persecutors. One of the great principles you can live by is to obey God and leave all the consequences up to Him. You just obey God, trust Him, and you leave the rest to the Lord. Here's David with that kind of attitude. I'm just going to continue doing right. Now, David's drowning is about to the point where it's going to turn into despair. Before it turns into despair, it reaches depression. And so I want you to look at it, uh, a verse with me here in Psalm 69. It's verse number 20. Verse number 20 says this. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. Huh. David is at the point, listen, reproach has broken my heart. What is he saying? I'm drowning. I'm drowning in a broken heart. I'm drowning in my sorrow. And he makes this next statement. I am full of heaviness. Listen carefully. The word depression is not found in the Bible. But the description of what depression is is found in the Bible, and it's found right there with that word heaviness. The word heaviness in our Bible is equivalent to what we would say depression today. 
David is saying, I'm drowning in sorrow of a broken heart and I'm full of depression. I'm full of heaviness. Listen carefully. Just three points. How you will drown in deep. It starts off with that feeling of drowning, which leads to depression, and it ends up with despair. We'll talk about despair uh, really real, real quickly in a moment. Then we'll be done. But now he's at the point of depression. I am full of heaviness, verse 20. So this is going to be point number six. David was not only broken hearted, but falling into deep depression. In Proverbs 12, verse 25, the Bible says this, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. David is falling into depression now. I want to quickly give you the formula for depression. The formula for depression. Well, first let me give you the definition for what depression is. Depression is a mel melancholy soul or depressed Spirit. It's a trodden down spirit or soul that is, in, in essence, heavy. feel like there's a great weight holding it down, keeping it from rising up. Here's the formula for depression. Insult slash injury. You choose whatever word you want to put there. Insult slash injury plus anger times self-pity equals depression. There's the mathematical uh, formula. An injury plus anger because you've been injured. I'll show them. I'll get back at them. Times self-pity equals depression. It's a formula. It starts with an injury that takes place. Then we get mad and upset and angry at it. And then we start feeling sorry for ourselves. And we start looking within ourselves. Instead of looking up to the Lord, our maker, the helper of heaven and earth, our, the maker of heaven and earth, the helper, our helper, the one we run to the hills to find help from, we, instead of looking to him, we try to get through the sorrow. Depression not dealt with will lead to despair. So David starts off the chapter, I'm drowning, I'm sinking, Lord, please save me. Then he's to the point where, it's not even worth it anymore. I'm so sorrowful. I'm so heavy. I'm so depressed. Ah, I quit. I give up. It's, it's just not worth it anymore. And then that depression leads to despair. David's prayer in verses 14 and 15 show us the transition from depression to despair. Verse 14, he says, Deliver me out of the mire. Let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. This would be point number seven. We'll uh, stop with this thought and despair. David's prayer was that this hurt David's prayer was that this hurt would not cause him to be swallowed up into the gulf of despair. David knows where he's at. He knows he's treading on depression waters. This drowning of sorrow has led to a depression. And his prayer is, is that the Lord would save him now. Save him before the very dangerous state of despair. What is despair? Here's the definition for despair. A complete loss or absence of hope. Think of that. Think of that today. It's a complete loss or absence of hope. 
That's where so many people are today. They've lost all hope. It started with the feeling of drowning, sorrow, depression. Now it comes to the point where they're in desperation, there's despair. There's no more hope. Despair is what follows drowning and depression. That despair is what causes some people to commit suicide. The people that commit suicide is because they've lost hope. It is said that you can live for like 40 days without food. You can live for maybe three days without water. But you can't live for one minute without hope. You've got to have hope. There's got to be hope. There's got to be something to live for and hope for. So many people are in crisis mode right now. They're drowning, they're depressed, and they're at the end of the rope, holding on in despair. 2 Corinthians 1.8 says this. 2 Corinthians 1.8, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, Above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Paul is saying to the Corinthians, listen, in our travels, in our serving God, in our missionary work, we got to the point where we were pressed out of measure. That means we were stressed beyond compare. We couldn't deal with it anymore. We were losing our minds. We were out of strength. We had no more strength. And he says, even so much that we despair even of life. That's 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. Paul says, we got to the point where we despair in life. And that's despair. That's where David was going. And he knew it. He understood it. He was getting very close to the edge of that, end of that rope. And so he pleads with God, prays and begs God to deliver him. I can't leave you on that point. Let me give you verse 18. Look at verse 18. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of thine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before thee. David says this. David wanted God near him because he knew the Lord would bring relief to his broken heart. As David is praying here in Psalm 69, verses 18 and 19, David gets to the point where he realizes what he needs is God near him because God will relieve his broken heart. The psalmist said in Psalm 34, 18, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. The Lord was the answer. The Lord was what David needed. And he says, Lord, please be near me. Draw nigh unto me. Draw nigh unto my soul, O Lord. Redeem me. Deliver me out of the hand of mine enemies. You have known my reproach. You understand what I'm going through. You know how I feel, Lord. Please, you're the only one that can save me. Deliver me. I'm begging you. Jump in the waters and pull me out. That's what his prayer was. Because he didn't want to go into despair. Yes, he was drowning. Yes, he had heaviness or depression. But he knew he had to get a hold of God in order to prevent from despair. And David did that. And if you look at verse 29, that prayer came true. The answer to that prayer came true when he started turning his eyes. David took his eyes off his broken heart and he begins to magnify the God of his salvation and that's the moment that prayer of deliverance. That's the moment the depression started to flee and he was saved from despair. Verse 29, David says, But I am poor and sorrowful let thy salvation, O God, set me on high. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. David knew 
how to get out of this pit. David knew how to stop himself from going into despair. It was going God into prayer, taking his eyes off of his circumstances and putting his eyes on the Lord, the maker, creator of the universe, looking onto his redeemer. David takes his eyes off his broken heart and he magnifies the God of his salvation. And then he does what he's good at. He starts playing that harp. He says, I'll praise the name of God with a song. He begins playing that music. Music is a powerful way to restore joy and sorrow that has been stolen by the devil. In fact, Isaiah 61, 3 says this, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And here David is praising the Lord with a song. And as he's praising and magnifying his Lord, he starts feeling a relief. The weight of the pressure. Hey, where, where'd it go? It's, I, feel, I, I feel lighter now. And the more he praises God, the more he magnifies God, the depression leaves. The, the sorrow will be healed. The, the drowning feeling will flee because the Lord relieves him. David's broken heart would be relieved as he sought the Lord. Verse 32. This is the last verse tonight, this morning. The humble shall see this and be glad. Look at this next phrase. And your heart shall live that seek God. Your heart shall live that, as you seek God. David overcame the despair the depression, the drowning feeling, he overcame it as he sought the Lord. And as he sought the Lord, the Lord spared him and delivered him from drowning the deep. Today, I don't know where you're at. Maybe you don't need this message today, but someday you will. Follow the way. If you're right there, if you're going through drowning feeling, maybe you're at the depression stage, Hopefully you're not at the despair stage because there's never despair for a Christian. Remember what despair was. The complete loss or absence of hope. There's no such thing for a Christian. Our hope is in the Lord of glory. He is our hope. We have the hope of eternal life that God has promised who cannot lie. Our hope is in glory. As a Christian, we have never time where we can be without hope. So let's remind ourselves of that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God this morning. And Lord, I see David. I mean, I've been where David has been. Maybe not to the same degree and certainly not the same circumstances, but I've felt times where I felt like I was drowning with emotions. Where I felt like depression was coming upon. Lord, I'm thankful that I too have never gotten to the point where I've been in total despair. And Lord, the reason we are kept from that is because of you. When we turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full into his wonderful face, the things of this world fade away. We know who our hope is in. We know where our faith relies upon. And Lord, when we seek you, our hearts shall live. Help us this morning to grab onto the lifeline, to grab on to the, the, the raft, to grab on to the mighty hand of our lifeguard, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we will be spared from that emotional turmoil that this world brings our way. Help us to live in the certainty that we have in Christ. Bless us now as we close with the song. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to uh